welcome to the Big Daddy Hacks YouTube channel. I want to thank you again for tuning in and for consistently being a part of it. If it's your first time, welcome. What this is is going to be the compressed interview with Arjun Dodds. We had his full live stream interview on Big Daddy Hacks Live. And if you want to see the full content, where it has a little bit more features, where you'll see comments coming in and you'll see why we're kind of chuckling and laughing a little bit. Uh, you have to go to the Big Daddy Hacks Live page in order to see that kind of content. Otherwise, you get the compressed version here that you can listen to at your leisure. With that, if you see anything during our live interviews, like our hats, our tees, our hoodies, or long sleeves, you can get it from www.clutchbrandonline.com. Don't forget to use the promo code HOLK. Or you can message me on Big Daddy Hacks Live, Big Daddy Hacks Buy, Sell, Trade, or comment here. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe because what we're trying to do is grow the game. And if you're watching this, maybe you don't know much about softball and you're about to learn about it. Or B, you love the game as well as I do. And what we're trying to do is promote it and grow it. And we can only do that with your help. So if you like what you see, subscribe and hit that like button. With that, let's get to it. Enjoy the content and look forward to seeing you in the future. Without further ado, let's get Arjun in here. And let's talk some softball talks. I know what y'all are waiting on anyway. All right, now sit here, be talking the whole time. So let's get him on here. It, it, we got Brandon coming in here now. Let's get him in here as we're as we're touching base on this. Hopefully, he has his cape tied tight. I hope he still has it on. That'd be kind of that'd be kind of fresh. Brandon, there you are, little buddy. We can't see you much. Hey, I'm here. Where's the rest of you? There you are. I'm right here. We were hoping we were hoping you're still wearing the cape. So I just to get you kind of refreshed here as you're hopping in here. I apologize. It's all right. How was the meeting? How'd it go? Anything's popping? First time we got to see uh all the new girls that we that we chose for our team. So yeah. Good. That's awesome, man. So what we've been talking about is we, we were talking about our just moving back to Texas. Right, so we talked moving about back to Texas. moving back to Texas. Yeah, I know, man. J J I'm not sure, I, I'm not sure I, I blame him on that one. Exactly. Mag's upset. Hey, so we also talked about a little bit that he's getting back to some old buddies and kind of the old crew. And so I okay. asked the question because we never really brought this up as as you guys that play at that that you know from I'd say from A on up level, how important it is when you can play that local stuff with your boys and get back to just having a few beers and kicking back ball. Where it's not some serious business, you know. We're kind of touching base on that a little bit. Well, the congratulations on moving back to Texas. A lot of people are going to Texas right now. Oracle. Don't get me started on that. <laughs> uh, Tesla. I mean, you know, Texas must have something going on over there. Yeah, Nasdaq. The uh, Nasdaq's talking about trying to go back there also, which. You know, they bring that stuff there. Hopefully it doesn't flip Texas blue. Wow. That's interesting. Uh, J-Mag is clearly right? upset. He's uh, – <laughs> his, his BP partner is leaving him. He's got to find somebody else. I know. That's probably the best – most fun BP we have. You know what I mean? Out there trying to hit that hill. Oh, I can only imagine. <clears throat> uh, there, we've already talked about the level you do play at. And, uh, you know, for those that don't know, who have you been playing with the last few years? <laughs> Dan Smith. Dan Smith. Well, I think we've all heard her. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing with Dan Smith. Yeah. So that was kind of, uh, that was kind of some news you brought to me the other day. So you want to touch base on that a little bit? We can kind of go back and forth. I kind of give you the format of questions, but we can jump around. Let's wait on that. I, uh, I you, want wait? you want to wait on that? Yeah, let's wait on that. Let's wait on it. So let's talk about how did you get started into the game? Let's talk yeah. about that. Well, um, in, in conference ball, um, well, I guess we can go back to the beginning. I was coming home from, from college on a basketball scholarship where I was a, a knucklehead and, and lost my scholarship being stupid. Um, and buddies of mine were going on Friday nights and doing stuff. And I was like, where the hell y'all going? Uh, my buddy, Dane and Gil, high school friend, was like, oh, we go play slow pitch softball. And I was like, softball? You know, pretty much what everybody softball person says, softball, that's, that's dumb. He said, no, come check it out. So I went out there and got in the batting cage and swung and missed 10 times at Big League Dreams. <laughs> I was like, damn, this shit's hard. 
<laughs> I was like 19 years old. So I played with uh, Blues uh, Blues Bombers, a little co-ed team at Big League Dreams League City when it first opened. And I was deathly afraid and couldn't hit a, I was scared to try to hit a home run because I thought the fields were huge and uh, <laughs> just hit it around. And then conference ball, I had, I had two shots. Uh, the first one was with Billy Maggart when he was on FBI. And uh, let's just say my first at bat ever in the conference, it was probably the most memorable one. Uh, Gino Buck was pitching. And, he, you know, you get in the box, you've never done it in the game, so it's super fast pace. You know, now it's slowed down, but then it was like, holy shit, you know, this ball feels like it's coming 100 miles an hour. And uh, he struck me out swinging. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking dry hacks. <laughs> legit, legit, legit swinging. And before I could even make it back to the dugout, Billy had already posted it to the Lone Star message board and messaged all of our buddies and everything like that, like giving me shit. And I was like, son of a bitch, you know. But nobody remembers what happened after that. You know, I didn't make it out, but, you know, it. Uh, that's just, you know, that's what makes softball so fun. And then the second time I, uh, I didn't play for two years, I'd moved away to Illinois and was working. Came back and back to Texas and hitting a few home run derbies and Nolan from Nightmare uh, needed a pickup for the Houston Major because uh, one of their guys couldn't make it and um, just by the grace of, the grace of God you know I got my shot there and kind of the rest is history I, I played uh, with Nolan for a few years um, not really sure can't remember how many three or four um, and then went on to Sonny's and then from Sonny's to Dan Smith. I started out, shit, when I started playing turnball, I started out in e-ball with slap a hoe. <laughs> are, they, are they part Cherokee? No, man. And, and, and it was, you know, looking back now, I'd probably never wear the jerseys we wore back then. But uh, it actually stands for save lives and put a helmet on. It's like a bike motorcycle thing, you know. But, oh, that's cool. But also they have, neck, like, you know, half-naked women with handprints on their asses. So on the jersey, so <laughs> be a conference team name next year. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is that gonna be the new Dan Smith, the new DS? <laughs> now, there's gonna be some host slap next year, that's for sure though. Oh so, yeah. Okay. Oh, man. So who are you playing with uh now? I will be with Prodigy. I just uh committed to them I don't know, a few days ago. I I actually had asked for my release from Dan Smith about a month ago. Um, not many people knew that. I, you know, I don't really get into the whole softball talking and all that, but yeah, I had uh, asked for my release, um, asked Dan and Pat and Dan called me and, you know, gave me my release. They were shopping around trying to replace me and play, a player, a couple of players on the team were trying to get me off the team just without a bad major world series. So it is what it is. Um, but I just said, you know what, man, there's no hard feelings. I, I get it. It's a business. If you want to give me my release? Give it to me. You know, don't hold me back. I've been respectful to you. I, I I'd appreciate you know the same respect reciprocated. So he called me. You know, let me go. And then a few weeks later, I guess they folded. So uh, we can talk about that, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I mean, obviously, you, you ain't trying to put nobody's business in the streets, but I mean, you know, a lot of people want to know what happened. I mean, you know, the dude. <clears throat> consistently he's got the highest payroll in softball. We all know that. And, uh, oh, big time cons consistently. I mean, you know, I mean, he, I mean, I wish I had a tenth of that dude's money. Uh, <laughs> I mean, did uh, I, he's I, a, he, Dan's a, Dan's a great guy. Um, phenomenal sponsor. Um, and it just overall, just a good human being. Okay. Um, why the team folded? There's a lot of different reasons floating around on what happened here and what happened there. I, I spoke to Dan, you know, just, hey, man, sorry to hear about the team. You know, that sucks, you know, yada, yada, yada. He told me his reasoning, but he's also told – he's told several different players different, you know, different stories and this and that, like to keep people happy. But everything's came back to one common denominator. And uh, I, apparently he just, you know, one player kept causing drama. Uh, amongst the other players and then trying to tell him how to run the team and what he was doing wrong and doing right. Um, and that, that's just kind of where he left it with me uh, on that, you know. So really, go ahead, go ahead. 
he had met, he had mentioned uh, players asking for more money, but that was kind of a drop in the bucket. I mean, he's the amount of money he pays people, you know, um, it, it's 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 unreal. But it's you know, it is what it is. It's his money. He can do what he wants with it. You know, a lot of people don't like talking about people getting paid and this and that. And it is what it is. I don't know what people got. You know what I mean? But it's not my business. It's not my business to tell. But. You know, it's his to do what he wants with, and that's why he can fold the team up like he just did. And it sucks for those guys. You know, there's a lot of great guys on that team. A lot of great dudes on that team. So, Do you feel that you guys – obviously, in the past, you've had great, great seasons. But last year, you know, you guys didn't get it done. No. Do you think that that would have been any different this year – Obviously, I know you would probably say yes, it would have been different, but with all the different you know, teams. You don't know. I mean, you don't know what would happen, you know, what, what could have happened or what would have happened, and we never will. Um, I'm not ever going to say yes, it would have been different or no, it wouldn't, because, you know, you truly just don't know. But do I think it would have been different for myself? I mean, I hope so. I can't do any worse <laughs> than I well, did at the majors. This is what I kind of meant by that, okay. is that uh, a month ago, I, I mean, you guys had to know that Andy was was leaving, right? Yes. Okay. So, and, and we all know that he's a game changer on the mound. I mean, he, he, he is, no matter how you slice it, whether you like him or you don't like him. So, that's a big role to fill. Not saying that Nino, Nino is going to be your starter, right? Um, I, I don't know. I think it, I really stay out of all that stuff. Uh, personally, um, I believe it was dirty. Was going oh, to be it was going to be dirty. And then, and then they picked up Brian uh, Renner, um, who he actually Facebook messaged me when he got signed. <laughs> I was like, man, I look forward to playing with you. And I was like, hey, bro. <laughs> Sorry, I man. My release. I asked for it. And he's like, oh, shit. <laughs> uh, okay, so obviously I was off base on that. So anyway um, – you know, with with Andy not being there, and I guess a couple other pieces kind of falling too. I, I mean, clearly there's plenty of talent out there for for Dan to retool. But you you know, as we all know, softball. I mean, pitching. I mean, if you don't have a good pitcher, you know, it's it's going to be tough. You know, especially at that major level. I mean. You know, that's I guess that's what my question was, is that you – I knew you were losing some pieces and you were gaining some pieces, but, I mean, was how would the you, yeah. team industry been? Uh, I mean, losing Andy hurts anybody. I mean, even at 50 years old. I mean, he, he really is a game changer uh, on the mound. Uh, I think I think that been, we'd have been just fine. I mean, with Dirty and stuff, you know, we'd have probably gave up, given up a – gave up a few more runs and this and that, but – you know, um, it would have been it would have been kind of just like a learning curve, you know what I mean, gelling, because you would have had a new middle infielder since they had let Lulu go and a new pitcher, which is, it's, you know, those are two key positions, the middle infielder and the pitcher. Um, but, you know, if they would have put Rocabaldo or Marshburn over the middle, um, they could get the job done. Um, and Dirty and Renner on the mound, I mean, to me, I think I think Renner's one of the top pitchers in the game. You know, to be honest with you, him, you know, him and Dirty are up there. You know, you have top five pitchers in the game. You know, you got, you know, the people's top five, and I have my top five. But you know, I think Renner's up there uh, uh, with him, along with the uh, I, I can never say his last name. The dude from MPT, Nabrowski, Nabrowski, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, I, he's up there, man. I mean, they, him and Renner are both uh, up and coming. And Nabrowski's obviously been there for a while, but man, that dude's. He's got a really good knuckleball, and so does Renner, and he's such a big, big person on the mound. But I think it would have been okay. I don't think, you know, we would have won as many of the tournaments like we did, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, those tournaments don't mean jack shit unless you win the major, and we all shit the bed at the major. So. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Holler, if you hear me. Feeding off of that, with your with the new team with with Prodigy, mm -hmm. where do you think that you're going to be able to help them? Obviously, hitting, but I mean, are you going? Are you having a new plate approach based on what you see there? Like, are you, I mean, 
what was your what was your it's hard to say role but at, at Dan Smith you guys had a bunch of guys that were softball whackers you know what I mean like you had a bunch yeah. of donkeys sure. um and it you know I think that you've got more more athleticism from what I can tell over at Prodigy so I mean, what is your plate approach going to be this year, if, if any, any changes? There won't be any changes. I, I've approached uh, each at bat pretty much the same since I've really got on Dan Smith. You know, my first year on there with Dan Smith, it was a, it was a learning experience, you know. Um, I was just, you know, swing hard and wherever it goes, it's going to go you know, as hard as it can. I hit a lot of bad home runs. Um, you know. There, I, I, I'm pretty sure my role is just going to be, you know, hit it hard and, and just hit it hard. Uh, but I don't know. I've, I haven't really thought, thought about it. I signed and actually just sent my contract in today. Um, but I hadn't really discussed that with them. I mean, with the bats and the balls that we have in today's game, I mean, everybody's a donkey. You know, it doesn't matter where you play. You know, it's it's – you got guys weighing 180 pounds who can whack it out of a 300 foot field with no problem. You know, um, my role over there, I, I don't know. I, I hadn't even thought about it. I just know my, my approach is always do the right thing. You know, when it's on second and third one out, you know, hit it backside or go through the gut, you know, just, just play the game the right way and be the best teammate you can be. <laughs> it is what it is. Do you, do you think that, your reputation for hitting the middle is is what makes people not want to pitch to you. Yeah, I mean, people told me that. I mean, I, I don't hit it. Like, if you look, just like I've told people when back home, when I went home and people were talking about the, the video that John King said posted, you know, uh, with Dabrowski snapping me off. And like, I think it was Cincinnati, I think it was. It was Cincy with terrible lighting. Yeah, um, snapped me off. Um, I, I was like, I didn't go middle. I went to the left. I don't go straight gut. I go left and right. You know, it just depends on where the middle infielder's set up and what the shortstop and second baseman are doing. There's a lot of different variables that go into you know, your approach. Excuse me, when you're going through there. Um, but yeah, I think that it makes people not really want to pitch. You know, to me just because of that. Um, from what people said. Plus, I stand so far off the plate that you really don't know where I, I, I'm possibly going to go with it. So that's, right. kind of, that's what Andy told me last year, like just where you stand on in the batter's box. Like it's where, you know, if I pitch it inside, you can still go backside or middle. If I pitch it, you know, outside, you got long enough reach, you can hit it, you know, backside and middle. So, uh, yeah. Is that the approach you take 90% of the time you go up? Because you're talking about where your defense is positioned, but especially like let's say at Space Coast or in a venue like that where the wind is, blowing usually in that direction at the jet stream. Is that what you're looking for is, is to probably shoot that that backside gap? They, uh, Space Coast is completely different than any ballpark that you play at because of the dimensions of the field. Um, it allows the guys to really more, you know, free up a little more on their swings. Therefore, you don't you don't really go up the gut uh, at Space Coast. You go right center, left center. And that's where you, you aim, where I aim. Um, and just kind of hit it and, and, and run you know, as fast as you can. At 300-foot parts, it is a lot different because you have to – I mean, you can just miss by a, a fraction of a, a, an inch. That ball's going to spin out of a 300-foot park like it's nothing or you do a half swing. So um, the approaches are different on, at, at Space Coast, definitely just gap to gap. 300-foot field, you sit there and you try to hit the, you know, the 3-4 hole or the 5-6 hole or, you know, left or right of the pitcher more. You really got to dial the swing down. You can – you know that. That's it. You know, you got the hitting golf balls <laughs> – <laughs> yeah, we talk about that a lot, especially now with the change of the ball. And that's one of the ones I usually let Patsy run with. Talk about that that pro one being a lot of ball for a three hundred foot field, and that they should save it for uh, that three twenty five plus because you're already running into that issue with three hundred foot fields where you, it doesn't take nearly as much to put it out. And like you said, everybody can do it, and it changes the game up. And it just allows you for more of that shooting the box. And now you're shooting at the box with a pro him. <laughs> it's just it, it changes up quite a bit, but uh, it's good to hear you say that. And we're getting a lot of comments in here. And one of them has been like that, that Dan Smith didn't really use you correctly anyway, from a lot of people's opinions, it seems like a are popping in here that your, your position on that team or your role. 
And I'm glad Brandon kind of asked that, you know, going to a new team, what, what's your position going to be, your role going to be. But I guess it's a lot easier, as you said, you kind of touched on it, that if you're just the big dog on the team and it's fun to eat, you know, you got that all, all you can eat buffet. But when you got, when you're surrounded with guys that can hit it, you got to adjust that swing and take those team swings. And it's good to hear like what your approach is. Cause you being a big monster. You, I mean, you can just go out there and whack anytime you want, but like, I'm a monster, but that's not your idea and approach to it. It sounds like, which is, which is good. Good for people here, but who else, who else do you know of, or can you say anybody else that's going to be on that team with you next year? Uh, I think they released, did they released the roster? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, uh, it's not my place really to say Dan Smith went over there. Um, but <laughs> I know that their core guys, they had like Jordan Spaulding and, Lex Ramirez and, and, a, and a few of those other guys, uh, they, they sent us the roster, but I really hadn't paid attention. We sure. got, uh, you got uh, Bill Pinkham. Kirk, Kirk, Josh Kirsten's on there. Pinkham's pitching. Mullins, Radish. It's just popping in my head right now. Um, and a few of the other guys. Um, third base, shortstop. Middle supposed to be Bama. Second's AU or some other dude. And first base is Big John Nelson. Shortstop JoJo. And I don't know. Who's JoJo? I think he's an up and coming C player. I'm not really sure. Is he? I know. That's that's crop gang. That's my that's my that's my dude, man. JoJo. <laughs> well, yeah, that team is gonna be really, really, really good. Are you gonna continue to swing the Eastern product? Are you, nice I, will, I will swing Easton uh, next year. I have one more year left in my contract. I just re-upped this past season, a two-year deal. Um, I, I, I've been asked to swing other brands, but it's just kind of like I'm, I'm a very loyal person, kind of the old school mentality. Like I don't I have no reason to change unless you do me dirty, you know. And, sure. and Brett, obviously everybody knows Brett's the most stand-up dude to me he's been the most stand-up dude and great ambassador if you know he tells me he's going to do something you know you might have to remind him a couple of times but you know he gets it done because he's so that's fair so, i think it happens to a lot yeah. of people you know yeah so i've never had a problem you know i need a bat i give him a call i i, I get a bat or you know my, my bat bag or something, whatever we need you know keep it. Uh, i just have to ask and i don't particularly like to ask too much but uh after that i don't know i, I don't know what's going on with the prodigy stuff I, like I said I haven't really got involved with it with them I just kind of uh just said yeah I'll come aboard and you guys went with and kind of just uh just rolling with it but people who have swung the prototypes on the prodigy bats have said that it was real nice so we'll do see you, how that turns out do you think that uh people are going to consider you the softball masher over John Nelson on this team? Doesn't matter to me. If they do, they do. They don't. So do like, that. like, I mean, it, I mean, when they say we got, we got this, we got the softball masher, are they going to, are they going to be talking about Arjun or are they going to be talking about John Nelson? They're probably talking about Chad Mullins. That dude wax it, man. He or, is, or, he, or Chad he, Mullins. <laughs> I mean, or they could be talking about Pinkham, man. I mean, you seem to hit a few backside bombs in Columbus this year. I mean, you mean they could be referring to him? Well, that's that's another question. Like, I mean, where, who, who are you going to be starting over? I want to know, like, who's going to be? I mean, are you going to be? Hang on, hang on, let me make sure. I... Better watch what you eat. Better watch what you eat. You got that old torn ACL, old get on peg leg. Oh, no, I'm about to start start dying. I think. Um, I mean, where are you gonna be playing? Like, you know, you gonna be trying to lock down that one bag, or you gonna be? I think I'll be in center field. Okay. Go throwback when I was twenty. You know, about be out there. Uh, Josh, Josh Kirsten is uh, gonna probably argue that point, but okay. He's he's got me on a speed regiment. You know. <laughs> Listen, people don't sleep on how fast Arjun is. Okay, I've seen this guy. <clears throat> Really, really, really turn some singles into doubles. <clears throat> Don't sleep on his feet. Didn't, didn't need some oxygen. I didn't need some oxygen. Uh, no, I, I'm, uh, I'm just assuming I'll be catching uh, DH and just like I do with every team. Uh, I don't. I really don't ask those questions. If I showed up and I was on the bench, I mean, I'm on the bench. You know, what I mean? you just gotta play your role and do whatever's best for the team. 
you know, kind of be the best teammate you can. As tough as it is, you know what I mean, being a competitor, whenever you get benched in a little tournament or anything like that, I mean, it sucks, but, you know, you just kind of – you got to try to do what's best for the team and not be a me guy. No, I know. I'm just uh, – You like I'm that just, politically correct answer? Yeah, yeah, you gave me the best politically correct answer. So, basically, what you're saying is that Chad Mullins is going to be on the bench and you're going to definitely be the starting catcher and um, he's going to have to – We'll go back and forth. You know, you never know, man. I mean, I've had all these shoulder surgeries. I can throw one ball and be like, all right, I'm done. I got to go. I got to go sit my ass on the bench. Pink will be like, get this clown out of here. <laughs> yeah, he can't throw it straight. He's throwing it over my head. I'm going to swap on every other day and keep the defense on their toes. But no, I'm excited about the team. Uh, looking at the lineup that they had sent, you know, it's, uh, it's a damn good squad. I mean, very athletic and, and young. I mean, you got a bunch of young dudes who, who can hit it, who hit it well, who aren't, who aren't really new to the conference. It's dudes who you know, have been there and they played at, you know, the major level or they played at, uh, played against the major teams all the time. And it's like, Hey, you know, we'll see what happens. We're going to do what we can and, and, and uh, just roll with it. Benji Ramos, coach, coach Benji Ramos says, yeah, uh, he will turn a single into a double and then pull a hammy. So that was back in my that was back in my days whenever I worked out religiously, so I was always super tight. But yeah, I will pull a hamstring back then. Now I don't work out. <laughs> uh, what is gonna be the biggest difference of you moving back to Texas as far as your softball? Because it's will you be able to play more or is there more tournaments that you'll be able to attend? The biggest difference for me moving back to Texas is I'll just be able to get back into my old routine. So basically uh, what you're saying is you're going to have a better BP partner. No, because I don't hit, I really don't hit much BP at all. Like that's the thing. Like I hit more BP this off season because of COVID and I was going crazy. Like I don't, I, I can't stay inside for long periods of time. And uh, J Mag, I didn't know where J Mag lived. I knew he was in Georgia. I knew he was somewhat close. I figured he was like an hour, hour and a half. He was like, hell no, you know, J Mag, hell no, dog. I know I'm right up the road about 25 minutes. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I was fresh off a of shoulder, second shoulder surgery, and I go out there, and he's talking about this damn hill, and I couldn't hit it the first day. And I was like, I can hit that hill. Just let me get back in the swing shape, game shape, and now it, mm -hmm. it'll be fun. And, and we hit shit. We're hitting two and three times a week just to get out the house, man. It was uh, yeah. And I don't know if you know, y'all don't. I heard people talking on social media when J Bag was on uh, one of his little podcasts with his buddy Evan Hardy. And all these people are like, I'll come hit at the hill. I'll come hit. Man, you ain't going to hit that damn hill. That hill is 432 feet to the base. And before you can even get to BP, you got to go through the hood hood. I'm talking like riding dirt bikes and four-wheelers doing wheelies down the highway hood. Like like you see. That don't surprise me. That don't surprise like, me. <laughs> I just think, I think I saw a social media post from, from Jay Mag about, I guess he's got, uh, he's got some dreads or something now. Oh, yeah. He's killing the game with some dreads. I think that's sick, man. I think that's sick. Hey. <laughs> I like it better than the man buddy had. I do. I, I, I give him that. Uh, we did have a, a very honest question come in. It says, being an, this is from Brandon Bellamy. Being an up-and-coming phenom, what advice would Arjun give a guy like me to get to his level? Who is this? <laughs> Brandon well, Bellamy. <laughs> It's Bells. Steroids, man. Just, just get on some steroids. You'll make it. I think you need a consensus, right? <laughs> I think that that's what that's what that TM sixty dude says. Everybody's on PEDs and and uh, and, and yeah. their wives and shit like that playing softball. Well, I mean, <clears throat> I wouldn't beat their. I mean, I wouldn't suggest you beat your wife or nothing like that. But that's what you say about roid raging and stuff like that. Nobody beats wise. No, nobody beats wise. Okay. Well, uh, we got a bunch of questions, but um, – Popping in here quick. Yeah, they are. They are. Keep track of all of them. Um, who is I your mean, favorite – What? Uh, Jamie, no, it's not. It's full of salt. Just answer your question. Who is your favorite uh, – Ten, uh, Tennessee, Texas ball player. If you, had, <laughs> if you had to pick one, man, yeah, my favorite Texas ball player. I mean, in the conference, 
it's going to be Ben Dunn. It's been my roommate for three years. Um, and he's just a stand up dude, class act. You know what I mean? Uh, in general, overall, my favorite Texas ball player, he's just a league. He's a, <laughs> this dude once hit five home runs off Andy Purcell when Re Andy was playing with Resmondo. Okay. And yeeted his last one. And I'm not sure if he did push ups in the batter's box after he did it or not, but my buddy Aaron Nance back home. He's, he's by far one of my, my favorite, most entertaining. I'll send you some videos and you'll be like, okay, we got to get this dude to come out. Okay. Uh, I, I, he's, a, yeah. he's, he's a blast. Uh, him and DG, you know, they, him, DG, Logan, pretty much the, you know, shit. I mean, I, it's really hard to nail it down, but DG and, and Nance are probably my two. And Logan are my two and three uh, favorite players uh, back home, you know, to, to play with. There's a lot of talent in Texas, you know, it just gets overlooked because there's not a lot of uh, sponsors that were willing to go to the conference, you know. Um, I know that there's a handful of sponsors out of Texas, but as far as from your experience, who is the, probably the most consistent guy that, you know, that can, you know, does sponsoring? It can be any level. It doesn't have to be conference out of Texas. Billy Ward. Billy Ward with Dirty Vegas. I mean, he's, mm -hmm. Year in, year out, he's got a team every year. I mean, yep. it, it doesn't matter what's going on, and he's a that's a cool ass dude too. Dirty Vegas. Yeah, I think uh, I saw a picture that he posted the other day that uh, I think he's going to have a conference team this year. I don't know what what level they're going to be, but uh, I saw that. So good for him, and, and you know, good for those dudes getting that exposure to try to move on up. Do you think it's it's more important for <coughs> those those younger teams to stay together to? Sorry, popcorn. Do you think it's more important for those first-year teams to be more regionalized, or do you think they should just try to go ahead and jump in, guns a-blazing, and just, just do what they can? Uh, I mean, it just, it's just the way you – it depends on how you look at it. I mean, as a sponsor, if you're putting your money into it and you're trying to win right away and you don't think the local talent you're going to pick up around there, is going to be good enough to win right away, then, you know, you pick up elsewhere. But um, there's enough talent in Texas uh, to do so. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's – I'm a big a, a believer of, you know, just trust the process with what you got. You know, first year putting a team together in the conference, you know, you don't expect you, – you expect to win and you expect to do very good. But, you know, you got to – that second year and that third year really tells if that team is going to, you know, Turn that corner or not that second year. Read some of the questions. Go ahead. We got a lot of people checking in. I'm just trying to get through some more of these really good ones, Ark. So we see a lot more comments. Usually, like Pat's to get it together as he's dying over here, stuff like that. But so <clears throat> one of the things that I, I, we talk about this a lot with the conference, with with more teams and more growth it's changed a lot where you, you kind of used to know years ago, you just kind of know what your top three, four teams are going to be, who was probably being the championship. And it's changed and grown a lot with the competition and talent uprising and the teams that are there where a lot of times it's about who gets hot, who's making a run. And now like with you being with Prodigy and, and some of these other teams where it's spreading, who do you think going into next year, seeing some of the moves that have happened so far, who do you think some of the top teams are going to be next year? Well, obviously Resmondo is going to be, the one everybody's chasing uh, this one because they won the major last year uh, and they're returning their whole entire team. Um, and I, I guess I saw online, they added Bradley Jones, you know what I mean? Who's a dude, he's, he's phenomenal. Um, so, I mean, everybody's going to be chasing Resmondo. So you got, you know, them and then bad draw. I don't even know who's the other major, MPT and us, you know, the top major teams. Um, I think that competitive edge team is going to be pretty good if they can uh, keep it, you know, keep it together and keep, you know, keep things rolling pretty good. Uh, top three teams, no particular order. I mean, Resmondo number one, and it's just going to really depend on who gels the best out of us, MPT and uh, whatever that other team is, Bad Draw. Uh, is there another major team I'm missing or am I? 
Is there four? Sure. I think they're staying double A. The last I heard they were, I don't, you know what I mean? But that's, I really, like I said, I don't keep up with it too, too much. That's interesting. Talk right, about well, double A then. Who do you think is going to be another team out of double A? It's going to be one of them uprising, just smashing. I mean, <laughs> this goes, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't really watch much softball outside of uh, whatever I play. Uh, I see, you know, Patsy's wanting me to show some favoritism here, but, you know. Uh, wow. Well, I'm gonna let him do it. <laughs> hey, okay. He's leaning in like, "Come on, motherfucker, we got you on this show. You better sit there and say something." <laughs> no, uh, double A, double A. You've always got a stream who's at the top, but I don't know who, uh, what double A teams are coming back this year. I know Riot's going to be there. Um, they're always there. Uh, they've got a good, good group of dudes uh, led by Vince, and they picked up. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Facebook himself, uh, Scott Hartling. Uh, so, uh, you know, he's a good addition to that team. Scott Hartling. And I think S and I will be good, too, with uh, Scott. Uh, he's put together a juggernaut uh, over there. I feel like he's got a really good, you know, group with, with uh, McBride and uh, a few of those other guys, uh, Fife and, and whatnot. Yeah, they're going to be a force to reckon with just because of, I mean, they shit that they won the uh, they won the double A as an A team. Yeah. Then you know, did Sports Reach stay A or did they go double A? That's what somebody was commenting on your team is Sports Reach. So I mean, I I haven't seen. If I had to guess, they're they're probably double A now. Are they? Yeah, Sports Reach will be up there. I mean, OJ and uh, Mr. Spear they put together a, a good team last year and they jailed. I mean, hell, that was a bad. That was a badass game they put together against Rosmondo with the Smokey. I mean, that's one of the biggest upsets in Smokey history, you know. Uh, that right there. I think Robbie uh, Robbie Fowl or Fowl, however you say his last name, you know, hitting a walk-off uh, on him. Um, that was pretty big. But, you know, you got Extreme, Riot, S&I, and uh, Sports Reach up there. I know I'm forgetting some teams, but I, like I said, I don't. It's still Bay Area. Bad. Bay Area is not going Bay Area, I thought Bay Area emerged with, see, Bay Area emerged with Pure the last time I seen anything. Dude, I don't – I mean, you know, that, 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 probably like me. I mean, we're sitting here talking softball, and we don't even really keep up with keep up with the softball. No. I think that fantasy thing uh, real interesting. They, 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 that they, that they, fantasy that we're going to do – I'll keep you on it because you're going to have to – you have to pay attention to what's going on. Listen, I'm drafting you first as a softball whacker, so I need you to hit a lot of home runs this year. Yeah, that'd be good. No pressure, by the way. So, and if you do, you, you get a free you shirt. That'd be great. <laughs> if you do, Pat's is going to keep you on you, but you're going to get a free shirt and hat. So, it's going to work out good for you. So, so, hold on. What are y'all doing? Explain it. So, y'all are having a fantasy softball draft at the beginning of the year, and you get to put together your team. What's the buy-in on that? We're still, we're still talking about it, but, you know, I'm thinking maybe 50 bucks, you know, 50 bucks a team. You can probably put as many teams as you want together, I, I can imagine, right? Yeah, I mean, not. Just, kind of like a, like a DraftKings type thing? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know. Maybe we could do it where it's just uh, you, you build it based on – see, okay, so I want to do it where you take everybody's average and you add it all up, and then, you know, obviously the highest number wins. But then people are like, oh, there's all these different variables. And I'm like, okay, well, how do you keep it simple? All right, so you go by batting average, you go by on base, or I mean, what do you do? Because you know, a guy like yourself, you know, you probably take a lot of walks. You know, that's something I've tried to do every year is to get more walks because I think I can hit any damn pitch <laughs> anywhere I want to, and uh, that's what you've had. To, I've had to learn since I've gotten to the conference. Hey, take the damn walk. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to do that draft. I'm telling you, it's going to be awesome. If I had to guess, a lot of guys are going to pick you for the most walks. Um, no, nah, you pick you pick Flip and Big John for the most walks. Well, I would say that, but yeah. the new bats, they're not walking. They're hitting. They always walk. Nah, they always walk. Just telling you, those new bats, pew, pew, pew. 
You're going to be the new are they good? I, I, Are they good? I hadn't, I hadn't really heard much. The only thing I seen was uh, what's his name? Big John posted something about hitting 450 foot bombs with him, and he hadn't done that in years. So I don't know much about him. I uh, I know that I saw a couple of videos with Orlando hitting him, and he's always been able to hit it, but he was. And that, in, Orlando? I, I think I seen that video, and he said it's not the red bat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we'll see. Everyone keeps talking about how hot they are. Um, <laughs> sorry, Marcus Weaver says that. Okay, well, there you have it, straight from the horse's mouth. Someone says those those bats suck. I don't know that they do though. How many? Um, uh, what about back home or back in Florida and whatnot, or 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 uh? Travis, where you're from, do y'all have a lot of wood bat tournaments? We we do have a league here or there that like at Corky's is a wood bat tournament side of 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 not Corky, sorry, of firemen's. And there's a few other tournaments like that that we do these big charity ones that we have big wood bat sides of it. But it's not popular where there's like a lot of leagues. For there are a couple. Um, we we started sort of getting interested in them because we were using them for just BP. Because you know, the, like last year. Swinging east and they they fail compression so fast that so we would go do all our BP with wood bats, and uh, we talked about. It. But down in Florida, they were getting pretty popular for a while before I moved back to Minnesota. I knew there was a few leagues that were doing it, like in Niceville and a few of those spots. But how, they still they do stopped it. all that. They stopped all we, that. Uh, we played. They stopped all that because it sucked. It doesn't <laughs> suck. It's just it's a challenge, and people don't like a challenge. That's what it is. It humbles you real quick. How many? How many? Quick. How many home runs did you hit? With a wood bat on a 300 foot field? I played in one in Tennessee and hit eight. Right field, left, right field line, left field line, all over. After like the third game, because I sucked the first few because you couldn't figure out how to hit it with a wood yeah, bat. Yeah. But, That's right. a, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. I mean, what I mean, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's, it's just, it, it, it humbles you. You gotta, you gotta be focused. You gotta hit it square. You, you gotta spin it just right. And, uh, if you miss it, they're not forgiving. It's not going to fly if you miss hit it. You know, I flew out many times to the warning track. But uh, that one in Tennessee was a lot of fun, man. It was uh, – that was actually like a week after the major. Like, I was atrocious at the major. Like, bad. I never played that bad softball in my life. I picked the worst time of year to do it. And I was like, I got to clear my head. I got to – I'm going to go play this wood bat with uh, with Rocco and, 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 and Hildebrand and the, those guys, Martell and, and whatnot. And, uh it was a lot of fun. We also played one in uh, – it was supposed to be in Cherokee. I forget the town we went to, but it was girl balls. Unlimited home runs hitting girl balls. That was – that was uh, – Well, that's fun. That makes a big difference with the wood bat. Like, we did that once, too, where you hit an 11-inch, and they, they were sailing off that thing. It was fun. I think yeah. we, were, we were playing down there past where we used pluses. So we played a couple of those ones. We used classic pluses, and then we used a shark for a while. We started that way, and then we talked – we talked to them. The city and they're letting us use the eleven inch girls balls and then it got real fun. Yeah. It's it's a lot more funny. That's the only way that I can hit them out is with the eleven inch ball, Arjun. So I hope you feel good about yourself. So what do you what are you saying about Mike and then? Or with, wood bat. with wood bat. Oh, wood bat, okay. Wood bats, okay. Yeah. okay. Wood bat, okay. No, you can hit it out with the with the with the regular ball. <clears throat> I mean I got it there, but I could never get it out with – I could never get a 12-inch uh, ball out. Electric. It's a lot of fun. Actually, after that tournament, I went and bought uh, bought a couple wood bats um, from a guy. Um, I think it's Barnyard Barnyard Sports or Barnyard something wood bats. Uh, Mike, I think his name is Mike Gallo, I believe. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I bought two from him and uh, had them sent to me. And that's what me and J-Mag are hitting BP with. And, and J-Mag's using his corn dog and uh, – I mean, it's just – you do that, and then you do one round at the end with your composite bat, and you're like, damn. You know, you, it, it adds more more consistency to your swing hitting the sweet spot than it does always using your composite bat, where it's forgiving hitting, you know, miss it. Who was uh, the funnest teammate that you had on Dan Smith? The funnest? Yep. I mean, fuck, I've had a lot of teammates on Dan Smith, okay? The turnover rate there has been pretty – <laughs> it was a revolving door my first year. <laughs> like a merry-go-round. I mean, it was. I mean, shit. You know, uh, 
Should I think that first year I'm trying to replay? Like I had uh, Texas, we had like four or five, maybe six, five Texas guys, LC, Whaley, EK, me, and Ben. Um, I could be missing one. Um, the, the funnest, I don't, I mean, define fun. Like what, what, what kind of fun? The guy, that's, know me, I don't, the guy that's always going to make you laugh. The guy that's always going to keep you on your toes. The guy that's always going to keep it light. EK. That's a cool, that's a good dude right there, EK. You know, Ben, Ben's, Ben's a lead by example guy. Uh, Lloyd was a good one too. Believe it or not, he, uh, he, uh, his first, first words ever, I never, I never met the guy. I've always heard, you know, all the stuff. He's a mythical creature to me. You know what I mean? That's why they call him the unicorn. And we're playing Palm Springs and, uh, I got up to bat and there's a home run left. And I thought I, you know, my math skills weren't up to par. I was like, shit, I hit this home run. It's a walk-off. We win. And I blow it out of here for the last home run. And they're like, no, nope, we need one more run. We're out of home runs. And we made a third. So I made a third out. We didn't run. Them. I was like, shit. So I'm sitting in the dugout on the bench. And Lloyd walks up to me and just goes, selfish. And kept walking. First words they ever said to me was selfish. And I was like, I was like my heart sunk. I was like, he's going to fucking kill me. He's going to leave me in the woods with some hogs or something. <laughs> <laughs> But no, Lloyd Lloyd's a good one. Um, Stovall was a good one too. He likes to call me story time. <laughs> Is I there a reason? Medicine. When I take my medicine, I don't shut up. Okay. Uh, so there, I guess there was something about, let me scroll back up. About uh, a little scrub team coming up and playing the Scrub team from Texas playing uh, run rule in the USA team. You know anything about that? <laughs> oh, you mean the year we beat them and they, they almost didn't invite Tim Barnes back to put a team together? <laughs> yeah. All I know is it was told, ask Arjun about a scrub all-star team run ruling Team USA and OKC. God, I think that was many years ago. Yeah, man, we, 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 we beat them pretty bad. and. Uh, They weren't too happy about it. Let's just say that. Okay. Thank you. Who all was on that team of yours? Oh fuck! You can't ask me that. I don't remember. I, I don't remember what I did last week. I know Ballard was on it. I know. I know Tim was coaching, so it's probably. Yeah, I don't know Dunn, and then a few of those other guys. But I don't. I think AU, and that's all I can remember. Talk to Marcus. Marcus probably. P Potty was definitely on it. Yeah. Oh yeah, Potty was on it. Yeah. <laughs> My liver remembers. That I remember. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brand, you should, Brand, Brand, maybe you go yeah. from your branch off of right there because they played Team USA, right? Had to go beat there, so which means they played USA say softball. And we have a guy here that it's you know it's a whacker. He's a hitter. What do you prefer? Do you prefer U trip or do you prefer USA ASA? I mean, all I've ever played was U Trip. I mean, there's no ASA. There's no ASA really around me. Um, my headphones died. Just the one? I guess so. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, it dinged in my ear. I don't know what that means. I guess it's about to die. Your pizza's here. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I like U-Trip better. That's what I played um, pretty much growing up. We do play uh, ASA sometimes on Wednesday nights. and It's a beer league. Do you, so you play ASA in Texas? I mean, it's one league. out. I mean, there's two leagues. You play at Kipper Meese, but the team's called, and if our team got put in it, they weren't going to play. Uh, so that was kind of bullshit. That's yeah, chicken shit. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand grown men's mindsets when it comes to playing people better than you. You, uh, you don't want to play because you, cause you know you're going to lose. Lose. Um, I know, but I deal with, I deal with it all the time over here. You know. Yeah. They, they get, they get so mad. I mean, you know. And so I, I mean, I, I feel, I feel your pain. I'm in the same boat as you. That's something that you and I can definitely relate on. 
well, it's not me. It's the team. You know, it ain't just it's, it's it's the guys we go out there and people like like growing up. Whenever we played tournament ball, and we'd play like the Texas Mike and the, the All Outs or or Bud Crew and stuff like that, and they were an upper team. Or you know, Texas Mike and was the team back then. Them and All Out. And, you know, we would get our spot, and I, I was always just like embarrassed. Like, no, we ain't taking no damn spot. If they beat us, they beat us. Let them beat us straight up. That worth way. If we beat them, you know, you need to see where you're at. Where now it's like. They literally will stop a game and be like, hey, they got too many bumps. Let's get our six-run spot or three-run spot or whatever it is. It's just like, hey, man, how do you put your fucking pants on? Like, when we play, we do play like a wonder world sometimes and teams want to take spots. It's like, what the hell are you doing, man? Like, you're a grown man. Just, just, yeah. You're more likely to beat us in the offseason than anything because we don't do really do shit in the offseason. Right. <clears throat> is there more softball – I mean, I know there's more softball, but is, is, there, is there more playable softball in the off season in Texas than in, in Georgia? I don't know. I, I don't I'm, – I'm sure there is. I mean, Texas plays pretty much year-round. I mean, I know the gentleman who's pretty much – I mean, he, I think he's going to end up taking over Texas uh, with this tournament that Jason Torres was son of God. I mean, I don't know if you've seen the Flyers and the teams he's getting in it. I mean, he's – Price packages after you know, people are people are tired of playing you know whatever they pay their entry fee two fifty three fifty or whatever it is and then winning a t shirt you know where he's giving out twelve bats fifteen hundred bucks and twelve bats and uniforms and stuff like that where he's he's rewarding you for playing in his tournaments and and taking care of you and uh, yeah, I think it's a really good concept that he's got going there I mean it's, I played that North versus South with uh, Rhino uh, out there and um, I think he had one hundred and eighty seven teams. That's crazy. And then he's doing another one coming up, and I think he's got 202 teams. So, I mean, it's like, you, you, you know, you, you give people you give people more incentive to come out and play and win, and uh, it's it's new teams winning it every uh, every weekend, you know what I mean, where they're getting they, – you know, bats are expensive to the, to the, the, to the guys who've got to buy them, you know, and giving back like that, I think it's, it's huge. You know, he's, he's done every brand from, you know, Mike and Worth to Easton to, I believe – and I don't, uh, you know, I don't know about Pure. I think he had an ordeal with Pure, but, um, but I mean, he's giving back. I think he's going to do good, you know. I saw that flyer. And I was like, wow, good for and him. And it's, and it's a good vibe. Like, you know, you, you go to the tournaments, the tournament, one tournament that I went to, it was just, there was just a buzz in the air. You know, everybody's having fun and, and just, you know, having fun again. It's like, damn. I don't know if that's because of COVID and people are actually getting able to get out. Holler! If you hear me! What do you think is going to be the biggest change this year? Do you think it's going to be the parity in the major teams? Do you think it's going to be the, the changing to the 240-cent bats? Or do you think it's going to be the consistently used pro M ball, or do, is it going to be a conglomerate of it all? Conglomerate of it all. I haven't swung the two forty bats yet. Um, I've I've heard that they're ridiculous. Just 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 you know, like the, like the, like like your Easton's. I mean, to me, there's not a huge difference in a two twenty to a two forty bat. Um, even though, you know, it can get in your head mentally when you're used to a 220 and you got to switch it up and go straight to that. But um, other than that, like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think there's going to be, because there's so many, there's so, there's so much athleticism now in the conference where you have, you know, the, the Rismondos and all the way down to the sports reaches and SNI guys where, there's so much athleticism through and through that any, any given weekend somebody can, you know, pretty much go on a run. Kevin asked what your favorite bat is. So, I mean, going back to the product you're swinging, what do you swing from the Easton uh, line? I was swinging the 12-inch uh, Helmer um, until they stopped making the uh, 12 – discontinued the 12-inch barrels this year. Um, uh, this year I swung, I think, a bank. The barrel's 12.75, but I think it's the mother load. The, uh, yeah, 12 and a half. Oh, yeah, 12 like and a half. Yeah, the regular is 12, 12 and three quarter, and that one's 12 and a half. It was a good bat. Who asked that question? Who asked that question? Kevin Ballard. Kevin Ballard. 
his old freak 98 he used to swing back in the day. <laughs> Man, you got a lot of people in here now. So I drew Hall a little while ago. We saw you, Drew. I didn't forget about you, buddy. So you're a laughing face and shit. So he was hitting, he was hitting that savage this weekend. Whew. Another big boy hitting it. Could be mistaken for Arjun. Trimmed up the facial hair a little bit. <laughs> so, oh, no. Drew's a little bit bigger than Arjun. Yeah, he's a house, man. I didn't realize that till hanging out with him this weekend. A big old, he's a big old donkey too. So, well, Brandon, what you got next, man? You're rolling with it. I see you were thinking there. I found my thinking cap. I'm trying to scroll through here. Arjun, who who is going to be? Uh, who do you think is going to have the most changeover this year? Oh man, I guess it just depends on who 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 makes their cuts for next year. I mean, some teams got like thirty guys committed, so they better make them cuts before January first. Or, or you know, uh, I, I don't know, man. I don't. I don't. I would have said Dan Smith. You know what I mean? If it, if it would have been uh, if I'd have been you know with that team next year, but they, they had a team. But I really don't know that. That I, and I really don't feel like throwing somebody's team out there and, and, and putting a mark well, on myself. You wouldn't have been on that team anyway because they cut you. So, um. holler if you hear me. Doctor, what were you looking for in a team when? So when you asked for your release from Dan Smith, for you to commit to a team, what were you looking for? Just the right fit, the right management, right sponsor. I mean, like you said, you're a pretty loyal guy. So what what is it that attracted you over to Prodigy? Man, whenever I asked for my release, I didn't, like I said, nobody knew for two or three weeks. Um, and, and the few teams that did find out, um, you know, people reached out to me uh, and asking me my plans. And I told myself that I don't have any. What I look for in a team, I, I really wasn't looking for anything. I just, uh, I told them, I, you, know, I'm all, you know, obviously I'm a new dad. Um, you know, I'm a little boy. So I told everybody whenever they talk to me and they can, and they'll all say the same thing. I said, right now I'm just sitting back enjoying being a dad and, and soaking it all in and after when Toys for Tots comes around, after Toys for Tots, I'll make a decision and, and pick something. Uh, what I what I look for in a team, I, I don't. I look for a good group of dudes. Like I, I don't. I played the game with Dan Smith. I went over there because I wanted to win. And my mentality is, I want. I just wanted to win. And uh, you know, uh, now I'm. I, I want to win still, but I just want to have a, a group around me who I know is not going to stab me in my back um, and be so cutthroat. Because you know, I'm. I'm pretty genuine. I, I, I'm, I feel like, you know, to a lot of people and um, that's what I look for this year is people who are, you know, kind of going to be the same mindsets as me, just all around, like somebody who I would have a beer with, you know, uh, sit and chill, not worry about what they're saying behind your back and stuff like that. Cause once I find that out, then it's like, okay, you know, when yeah. I see you, I'm going to say something to you. Like if I don't like it, you're going to know. And people know right now who I don't really like and who I'm pissed off at. So. I don't hold that back. I won't say it live on here, but people know. Um, so that's just what I look for is genuine, good people. People like J-Mag, man. I mean, like he's just – he's became one of my favorite people. He's just genuine as hell, man. He doesn't – you know, he'll have your back if somebody says something. If somebody ever said something about him, like, you know, to have his back. And, and and people like Ben Dunn and, and, and Billy Maggard and stuff like that, you know, those are just dudes who kind of tell it how it is and, and kind of go, go with it. You know, I'd rather you say, hey, you're fucking sucking. You know, then go and run and say it to somebody else. You know, what I mean, say it to me. You know, don't 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 run behind my back. That's that's what I look for. That's why with the the prodigy team, you know, you know, with Jordan on there, I played with me and Jordan came to the major level together uh, on Sunnies, and then we both went to Dan Smith together. Um, so he's one of the you know, the ones over there. Josh Kirsten, I played with him briefly on VCH, like the picture you posted of me and my baby blues. Josh and I were teammates on Astros, and <clears throat> dude, you want to talk about just a, a, a guy that? I mean, he's a hard, he's a hard nosed player. A lot of those guys are, though, man. I, I mean, you know, I, that was some of the best times I ever had was playing with, um, you know, with me and Pink throwing and um, uh, Mully and uh, Steve Edwards and and Kirsten, uh, Troy Kreider. Sid Stephanie, you know, all those guys, man, they're all freaking, they're all clowns, man. I mean, you know, 
I don't know Sid personally, but the few times I've seen him and, and like sat around him, that dude's hilarious. Dude, they're hilarious. And that that's what made softball fun again. Like, you know, I mean, I get it. You know, it's it's, it's the highest the highest level that you can play is is the major and double A and A and all that. And, and uh, um, it's important, man. You know, you got to take it serious. But uh, for me, um, you know, my mindset was a little different is that obviously I wanted to win, but um, you know, more importantly than that, uh, if I'm going to travel away from my family, uh, I want to be around people that I like. Yeah, you know? that, that's that's kind of what's happened to me, you know, this year. I, you know, obviously, like I said, new dad, but uh, beginning of the year, like we had the, we had case in, or she had case in uh, April 23rd. Um, so, you know, it's right when the season's supposed to be starting. And I was like, man, I don't, I don't know, you know, like luckily with, you know, with Corey, the woman I got, she was just like, you know, if, 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 you're, if I'm having the baby that weekend of Vegas, like obviously you're going to be here. I said, yeah, absolutely. But she's encouraged me to play ball still. Like she wanted me to uh, still play and, and everything like that. But whenever I was leaving and then I would like, like the duel, I went to the duel and, I missed out on, you know, you leave for those three days. Like you don't, when you don't have a kid, it's hard to understand. But when you have one and then you, you leave for three days, you come back and you're doing something different and you missed out on it. You're like, damn, like, you know, what about, what, why am I going to play this stupid ass game when I got a kid at home that's, you know, doing all these other things, but priorities, um, really. that, that's kind of where my mind's kind of went with this. Like I want to be around people who just going to be <laughs> and cool. And, and you got, you got some good ones in there on that too. Said more nervous. Were you more nervous at a major World Series championship game or changing your first diaper? Dad life. <laughs> uh, my, the, 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 when was it that what, the most ner- more nervous made my? I was more nervous uh, at my major World Series game. <laughs> <laughs> that old front leg starts tapping. You're like, oh shit, here we go. Uh huh. Becoming a dad was the most nervous thing ever. You know, saying so. Well, that's all I man. And we talked about that a little bit offline as well. And you know, you're in around to the fun holidays now, Christmas and everything else, where that's when it's really great to have kids and be able to celebrate that and have fun with it. And it does change things, ball and stuff too. Me, I was military, been military, so I had been away from my son quite a bit. But now being closer to having in my life, I love when he can be there with me. He's older now; he's 17. But I missed out a lot being military. I missed out a lot of him being a little kid. And it's tough when every time you turn around, they're bigger and older. So you, I get what you're saying. It's you want to you hang on to them and be there for all those moments. So you be part of it. Um, Rhino actually asked a good one. And it was one of the Rhino questions. Asked, yeah, say, Rhino did ask a good one. So I want to touch on that one. Who did? Rhino. Go ahead, Brian. So uh, Rhino asked, he said, uh, Arjun, what is one thing that you would like to change about the conference? change about the conference the bat and ball stuff I mean you know it's I'm just a hitter so obviously I want the hottest shit I can swing because you know what I mean it's it is what it is because I'm just a hitter Um, but whenever you like I said the balls uh, being so hard like we me and another me and Harvey uh, demoed the balls before they switched them so we we got to hit I don't, I don't even know how many swings we took at, at Space Coast, but um, changing the ball or, or the bats like they're doing, we'll see how it uh, it really uh, changes stuff uh, for it. That, that's something that, that that they're trying to adjust and, and figure it out right now, uh, doing that. Do you think that – this has been a, a topic that we don't really touch on, but <clears throat> we should touch on it more. Do you think that the discussion about the floating rubber – should be taken more serious. No, okay. No, uh, because they have the floating rubber when I played in Texas, and you know you give the pitcher that six foot back. Yeah, it's great for their safety. If anything, if anything, move the rubber back two feet, three feet. You know, mm-hmm. that's not that big of a difference. Um, giving a floating rubber, you can you get. I know back home, it's like six foot back, and yeah. then you know when you go six feet back, you know or it's six foot to the line, so you can put your foot on the line and be back, you know, so it's almost seven foot, seven and a half feet. That changes it a lot of th- things to do with your timing. Now, does it protect the pitchers? Absolutely. Um, if they move the rubber back, I, th- I, I, I truthfully think they should move the rubber back, you know, a, a two feet, maybe three, and the bases. Move the bases back and have a courtesy base at first. I, I agree with that, you know, and, and uh, I don't know why – 
that that's not taken a little bit more serious. I think pushing the bases back, you know, it, it, there's nothing wrong with that. Obviously having a safety bag, I mean, th- that's just – that's just being safe. I mean, a lot of parks have gone to that anyway. Um, so why not continue to utilize it? And, and I agree. I, I, I've, the floating rubber, <clears throat> it, the only reason I brought that up is, is one for pitcher safety. But, you know, there's no, there hasn't been an alternative. It's just been like floating rubber or nothing, right? So I like that, I, I like that, that you brought up, you know, moving the, the mound back a couple feet. Two, I mean, hell, even two feet really will, would be extremely helpful. But three feet is is even better. I mean, they, they, these pitchers, um, they're good enough, man. They they can they they can figure that out. Like, I mean, it might take. There's a little bit of a learning curve there, but if they're pitching in league or whatever, they're. I mean, most guys are pitching with a floating rubber already, or they're pitching behind a screen. You know, they actually had a conference tournament this year where they put the mound. Uh, in the wrong spot, and it was what, what's the mound regulation? Fifty feet. I don't know why I said fifty-three. Maybe it's because yeah, I, I, I thought it was I, as well, but yeah, you knew better. You better than I did. Yeah, no, um, it's. 50. As a pitcher, it's nice having that floating because you can do a lot with it. Besides being safer, you get a little bit of movement in there, and you can change things up, which which help you out defensively as well. If you go to a harder ball, there's pros and cons. I think to both of it. As a guy, as a guy that lo- I love to hit, yeah, I, I like it being the way it is. But as a guy that pitches, I think it'd be great being able to move around and do some different things with it. I think it changes things up defensively quite a bit. But I mean, that's a good one to bring up. You're right, Brand. We should bring that up more often. Uh, so it's funny. This, this is a normally uh, a pretty good question. Um, we talked about you the the your most favorite off-season tournament. What is your favorite preseason tournament? Trip Roth. Okay. Perfect. What reason? The atmosphere, man. It's it's awesome. Richie does a hell of a job. It's, it's for a good cause. Um, you know, the gentleman whose uh, son it's after usually plays with us on the team with KP and, and Billy and all those guys. And, uh, that's that's just a lot of fun. If you haven't been to it, people need to really go to it because it's it's by far one of the best preseason you know tournaments. I think it's it's like the weekend before Vegas or two weeks before Vegas. It's a good warm up tournament, and you're playing against some of the best talent in Louisiana. Actually, now it's more you know across the nation. You got you know Flip and Big John and Connie and all those guys are driving in uh, to play in it and uh, and whatnot. So it's. Uh, that's a fun one. Plus, you get you know crawfish. If you don't like crawfish, you know I don't know what's wrong with you. Um, but they have crawfish Friday night. You go out there and, and grub down and listen to music and have that home run derby where it's 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 a it's a huge crowd. I don't know you know what numbers the crowd. Maybe a thousand people watching. There's, there's every bit of a thousand people in in, in that place. It's it's uh, every year. It, it's it's so much fun. And like you said, if you if you haven't if you haven't done it, you need to go do it. Um, it it's just one of those tournaments that you feel like you feel like you need to go just because it's it, it is competitive and that I, I don't know why they don't do more home run derby bracket style like that. Like for me, that that's so much fun, man. Like you can really put some pressure on somebody. You can really see what someone's made of. Uh, you know I'll tell you, it really it does. It tests it tests a lot of the uh uh, you know, you, you, it gets a lot of exposure to a lot of the, the younger guys to where, say, you know, you know, the people who are in the conference and at the major level, you're playing against these the local dudes who are, you know, they're they're playing to whoop your ass, you know, and, and they don't. I'll tell you what, in Louisiana, they don't back down. I mean, they're you punch them in the mouth, they're gonna try to punch you right back when it comes to it, and they want to they want to beat you just to bragging rights. And trust me, they beat you, but they'll brag about it. <laughs> but that's just kind of what they. What it is, it makes it a lot of fun, a lot more competition and, and whatnot like that. So, yeah, I agree. Matt, y'all had asked that question earlier about uh, who I'd want to play with that I've never played with. Uh, it'd be it'd probably be Neil Hagelin. Okay. Yeah. He's he's. I've heard he has got. He, I know he's got the best one liners. You know when I've hung around him. Uh, but uh, I've heard that he's uh, he's. he's He's pretty freaking hilarious. He, he likes those seltzer beer and seltzer drinks, though. So I don't, you know, I mean, I I can't get down with that. But uh, yeah. oh, you're a seltzer guy too? No. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> I'm still stuck on uh, just regular beers, you know. Maybe maybe the original original uh, seltzer, the Ultra, the Globe Ultra. Every once in a while, you brought it. Um, the latest. All right. Well, I mean, we've been on for an hour and a half. Yeah, been a minute, man. You've had some good questions. You've had some really good questions. You've been, really on, for hour, but, um, you know, you've been so, on for about, about 50 minutes. You're late to the party. Yeah. yeah the party. You know, we, when we sign off, you got to put in some overtime. Yeah. I'm expecting some tougher questions, but it is what it is. Holler! If you hear me! Uh, you know, here's the thing is that I was trying to, like, let you kind of get into your element. Um, you know, obviously there's some, some questions that you dodged, you know. Well, which uh, ones did I dodge? I ask them. I ain't going to say names, but you can ask them. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, obviously people want to know more about the, you know, the Dan Smith thing and, and uh, you know. <clears throat> I mean, but, the Dan Smith thing, it boiled down to, you know, somebody telling them, you know, the team's not good enough, what you're putting together. This is, this is what he, uh, from Dan's mouth, but like I said earlier, He's told, you know, people have said so many different things. You know, he told one guy one thing, another guy another thing, and me something, you know what I mean? Like, whenever I asked for my release, you know, he told me on the phone. He's like, ours, and I'm thinking about, you know, fold the team. I'm, I'm close to fold the team because of all the drama that's been caused. And I was like, holy shit, like, you know, don't do that. But then, you know, after he said that to me, he's told other guys, you know, he wasn't going to do that. And then he's picking up all these other players, which is great. I mean, him, him leaving the game sucks. Don't get me wrong, it sucks because – He's, he was a great sponsor and he was great for the, you know, great for a great sponsor. It's, it, you know, to, you know, you never had to worry about anything. Um, so, you know, them folding sucked, but it also made it to where it also didn't run. It's a double edged sword. He's a great sponsor, you know, what I mean, phenomenal guy, but it, it also made it to where these other teams don't have to plunk out that ex, ex, extra, you know, money to try to get players to come over and play with them. And it, it made it to where it was like spending this to where they can drop it down to where now instead of burning burning through all their cash in two to three years, they can, you know, make it long. You know, longevity of a sponsor will last even longer now. So, I mean, that. Do you think that the major teams should have a points cap? No. Nah. Don't change that. I mean, if you do that, then there's no, there's no more major. It's just like you're playing local ball again. I mean, yeah, but what I'm saying is it's like, I mean, you know, look at Resmondo, what they did this year. You know, when they did a, a merger and they had 30. Oh, they, they, combined, they combined the, the, the number two team and number three team to, to beat uh, Dan Smith? Yeah. 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 You know, I mean. Don't you think that, 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 that those guys would have been better utilized, like on double A teams? I mean, yes and no. I mean, you got KP. You can't throw KP, you know, on a double A team like that. I mean, he's just it, it's it, it's you know he's too big of a name in the game to throw into a double oh, A team. I, that. I mean, I get that. I think what they should do if a team folds like that, and a sponsor does fold, that um, the players from that team that the team folded can't just jump on another team right then and there and go play that weekend or that following weekend. They should make it a three week grace period, a month grace period, or whatever it is. You know, what I mean, two weeks, three weeks. Um, I don't know when they folded, when they picked them up. I mean, it, it's I, – I, I don't think there should be a points thing. I mean, if anything, maybe increase the points scale for the double-A teams and the, and the single-A teams, you know. Make it to where they can add another guy. Instead of punishing the people who are on top, why don't you give the people the, the, on top – instead of punishing the major teams and putting a point system, a limited point system on them, why not increase the point system for a double-A team and a single-A team where they could add – that one extra major bump that could help them, you know, big time um, on the team. Another question just came in. I agree with you on that, but another question just came in. Uh, who is the most underrated player in the conference? Oh, shit. I mean, I think there's probably there's probably a handful of them. Um, I I really don't like I said I don't socialize too much, so I don't know people's names. Um, I think Tommy Melton's one. Uh, Tommy Melton gets it done year in and year out. Um, he's always up there on averages and, and and plays pretty good defense, even though he's wearing a mask now. But you know he still does good. Um, <laughs> McClanahan. And McClanahan. I mean, 
McClanahan's a game changer up the middle, and he's a game changer pitching. You know, he's you don't you don't want to go anywhere near the middle when McClanahan's up the middle uh, or, or pitching because he's gonna he's gonna get a glove on it some way or he'll wear it and try to get you out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I agree. I mean, I I 100 agree. I'll tell you my my favorite, and and, and just it's not just because he's a, a local guy, but it's because uh, he really is like a super underrated player. And people sleep on him, but they shouldn't. Is little KP? Is oh little yeah. And you're right. You're right. He's got just as much pop as anybody. He can play any position. He's got a rifle. I've never really underrated him, though. You know what I mean? I've always, I've always thought he was damn good and, and everything. Him and uh, um, Laser Dave. You know what I mean? Laser Dave. They get it done. That's right. So it's just like I. I've never really considered those underrated players. So, you know, I think Laser Dave might be. Um, he's got a damn good glove and an arm. Um, but KP, I've never really thought he was underrated. To me, in my eyes, I didn't look at him as underrated because I've always had a lot of respect for him. That's good. <clears throat> so, because uh, Brandon kind of went off with that, with that one too, is there any other sponsor out there that you haven't played for that you've been like, you know, I'd love to play for under that organization, for that umbrella? Um, I've always said before I finished playing softball, I wanted to play uh, under Mr. Rosmondo, Travis Rosmondo, um, okay. and, and for and for Brett, obviously, because I'm with Easton and stuff like that. It's always been kind of a thing to, you know, play there if I got a chance. It's just hard because they're a good group. They're a good, really good squad. They all, they, you know, they try to do the right things every at bat, and he's just a very loyal, uh, loyal sponsor. And they got a good group over there, so. Um, but that's something I've always uh, wanted to – since I since I got with Easton, it was kind of always a goal. Um, one more question. Who's the guy that has just made you say, wow? Good one. Bradley Jones. When I first met Bradley, I played in a, a pickup tournament here in Georgia. Uh, with some of the Kurt, Curtis Cornett and some of those guys, and Bradley was out there, and uh, he swung. and And I don't give props too much to anybody. I just it is what it is, you know. It's just how I am. And he, uh, his hands, man, he's just quick, quick with it, you know, straight to it. And some of the fastest hands in the, in the game of softball, because he's hit, some, you know, he hit some line drives out this year. And you know, coming onto our team, it was kind of like, hey, what's he gonna do? You know, you're gonna the pressure gonna get to you? Or you're gonna do good and he put on a show for us. He was a hell of an addition and a hell of an addition for his mondo. Steve Lloyd was another one. <clears throat> what are you looking uh, to, uh, what are you looking for to most next year? About to come back, you know, player, new team. What are you personally looking forward to most? Uh, not having the the uh, not having to look over my shoulder. You know, not having to worry about, damn, if I suck this game, am I going to be put on, am I going to be benched right now? You know what I mean? Um, not, you know, if I have a bad weekend, am I getting cut? You know what I mean? So it's just, it's just uh, go out there, play the game, have fun, do the right thing. And, and uh, we got what we got. Let's go. You know, you've, you've brought that up a couple of times. I know, you know, Pat's, and I, I see Brandon been out here now for a little while. It's about time. Probably start wrapping it up, but you've been bringing this up a few different times about the over the shoulder thing. And I, People realize the difference in level at that major level, playing for a team like Dan Smith, playing a team that's been around for a while, that that the intensity it takes and how seriousness and how it's more of a business at that level than some of the other levels coming up to where having a bad game playing for a team like that is taken more serious than if you had a bad game, let's say playing for A team or, or let's say B, come up to the conference and you're that damn good player, but you're just having a bad game or a bad tournament. And they might give it a little grace period. That seems like it, consistently from what you've been saying, it's a really big difference where you had a bad major and it's just like, what the hell? You know, even though you might have had good terms come up to it. What, what is that difference? How big of a difference is that jump with how they take a, a, a bad series or a bad You know, so not all the major teams were like that. Okay. And and that's and that's no knock on on Dan or any of those guys. You know what I mean? They're they're phenomenal. They treated me really good. You know what I mean? Like I mean, I have no complaints. Um, it is added pressure. Um, this year it wasn't it wasn't as bad because of Andy being over there. And you know we're not going to be doing 
27 changes and cuts throughout the year. The year before that, it was like you had a bad game, you're sitting on the bench and somebody else is in, then you're back in. And then, you know, one weekend somebody's here, the next weekend they're gone and you're like, damn, like shit, like can we just, can we just roll with what we got and, and let us gel and, and, and become, you know, a, a unit instead of, uh, you know, you starting to get the unity, then one guy has that bad weekend or maybe two weekends in a row has, you know, doesn't quite hit how he should hit. And it's just like, we got to replace somebody who's going to get it done, you know. With Prodigy, I don't know how it's going to be over there. I don't, I don't feel it's going to be like that over there with Sonny because I played for Sonny before. Um, I've never played for Charles, the the Prodigy gentleman, um, so I don't really know. And, and you got Big John over there helping put the stuff together. And I don't know if you've ever met Big John, but he's uh, one of the most genuine uh, human beings you could uh, you could ever meet. Um, so he's just a, he's a great guy. So like like I said, I'm trying to you know be over there with guys that are. You know, you just, they want to win. They're they're going to win. They expect to win. But at the end of the day, you know, they want to uh, surround themselves with the same kind of, kind of people that um, I do. Do you have any personal expectations for going into this next next year? Like, I mean, are you trying to? Are you, is there anything that you're trying to prove? Nah, it's softball. It's like, you know, I, I want to. I, obviously, I want to hit the best I can because that's all I do. You know. I always joke I want to win defensive MVP. You know, I, I thought I had a shot at it this year. You know, I had two balls popped up to me. I didn't make a single error, but. That's congratulations. I didn't, I did not know that. I know, man. Quick like cat, you know. Oh, Gato, huh? Gato. Uh, who won defensive MVP? Ben Dunn did this year, right? Yeah, Ben won it this year. Yeah. Yep. Very deserving. Good for, I was happy for him whenever he got that. And then uh, Marsh Spring won what, MVP? I think so. Yeah. yeah. He got offensive player no, there's... or. or I don't, I don't keep up with those guys. I don't keep up with those stats. That award ceremony was so huge, man. There was just so many people out there. I was – took forever. <laughs> I was out there, but – Was it? I was uh, I was uh, on the road to Christmas, Florida. <laughs> we, we, we got out that tournament pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> um, Changing in the parking lot. Changing in the parking lot and hauling ass, right? Shit, I, I didn't make it out the dugout. I had my pants off. I was like, screw this shit. I'm out there. Yeah, I'm out. Uh, before you before you're done playing softball, is there something that you really do want to accomplish? Man, be honest, I, I've had uh, I, when I came into softball, I, I had zero expectations, had zero goals. I just wanted to play. Um, playing with Steve Whaley uh, and LC, um, you know, you've seen the fire and the tenacity in their eyes, and, and winning a major. I wanted to win a major. Uh, they talk about it and what it feels like, and some of them had never done it. That's just something I wanted to do, and I did. Um, I, I wanted to prove that I belonged at the major level. Um, you know, just it's something I wanted to prove. Uh, I've done that. Um, obviously won the major world series, made, made the all world team, which the individual awards you get for shit like that, that really, it, it's, it's like, I, I throw all my trophies away. It's nothing to fucking keep. Like, you know, even the ring they gave us this year, I don't even know where it's at. Like it was, just, it's a 25 cent ring, you know, um, in my industry it is, but um, no, I mean, I wanted to play for Team USA. Um, that was a, always a goal. I've been invited or whatever the thing is on their little portal, whatever it is, they send it out. And if you're interested for like six or seven years, never got selected. Now I'm 34, so I can't play on the futures. And, you know, I'm a DH. If I played defensive position, I think I'd have had a better shot if I was halfway decent, but I'm not. Um, <laughs> one thing I had going for me on defense is I had a really good arm and, that's went to shit after the shoulder surgery. So, um, but no, I really don't, I don't have anything off the bucket list. I, I, I would like to win, you know, more major world series, obviously. Um, but if I didn't, if I left the game tomorrow, I would, I would be con happy and content with, uh, everything that I've accomplished, you know, I've, I've accomplished a lot. And, uh, in my opinion, you know, so it was, it was pretty cool getting the name on a bat with, uh, with Ben and LC and winning a major with Ben Dunn, you know, I don't know if people know this, but Ben and I were the only original people left from the Dan Smith team after he came into the game with John and those guys that next year when they put it together. Um, the original core, it was just him and I left. Um, and we, we brought him a major out of, you know, one out of three years, was it? Yeah. So what do you think of that shirt? I like it. At vanquishapparel.com, boy. I like that. I like that shirt. I like that shirt. What does your hat say? 
That's uh, Nino's brand, Dom. Oh. The Dominate? Dominate. Good old Nino. Yeah, I saw Harvey commented in here. He said, look at that shirt, my man. So yeah. That's my dude, man. I love me some Iron Harvey. Big old Viking man. That's why I couldn't pay attention to that any of the stuff that was going on ceremony wise down there because then his his homeboy Braun Strowman showed up. I fangirled over him for about an hour and a half. So He's distracted. Strong, big dude. That's funny when you see a big guy like that coming. Harvey's, all this, big old, old, Harvey's this big old Viking looking dude. All right. So I was playing in Oklahoma City at an ASA event and I see him and him and Shannon Smith, you know, these big beards. And I really didn't know Harvey back then. And they were doing like all these like weird like hand moves and kicks and shit. And I was like, what are you, what the fuck are what, are my legs? Like, what the hell are they doing? So I walk over to them thinking they're talking about, you know, a fight or something. And they're talking about the Dragon Ball Z cartoon that they had just watched that morning. That they <laughs> 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 Airbenders oh, or some shit. And then they're doing all these like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I just started laughing. I was like, what the hell did I just walk into? What's Dragon Ball Z? Hey. What's Dragon Ball Z? So, so I got – that brings up a question, too, because you just mentioned those two cats. You know, we talked about the trip Roth and the Derby in, like, a bracket format. If there was a Derby that was set up like how Softball 360 used to do it, I'd imagine that Shannon Smith and Harvey probably be, probably be teammates, right? Rolling side of it, Mike and Worth swinging off the bearded ninjas. Who would be your partner? If you got to pick, they said, Easton said, hey, you're going to hit for us and this derby, this bracketed derby thing. Who's going to be your partner to hit side by side with you, represent the brand that you're swinging? I mean, Canel. I mean, I can see that. I mean, if you're going against Harvey and Shannon, I mean, Worth or Harvey and Riley, you know, yeah. you got to you got to put somebody who's, you know, can, can, can do the damn thing. It's no knock to any of the other Easton guys. Uh, or Weggs or Clark. I mean, it's 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 out of those those three for me. You know what I mean? So I already know representing Clutch would be would be Brandon and, and BJ because you guys would be there just for come. BJ, you guys would be the comedy relief for the whole the whole damn series. <laughs> Are they gonna let me hit from second base? I thought yeah, BJ, of course, is, man. Is it BJ or is it Dan now? What, what, what's BJ's nickname? Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's killer hey, uh, it's probably you come up with like one of the best stories already right at the end I just <laughs> wrap it up and come up with something like that oh man you finished all your popcorn oh my popcorn's been gone man oh dude this is this is uh, Big Daddy Hacks he's Big Daddy Snacks All right, he's always got something he comes up with the best like I used to he's got that that popcorn on the show because I was really like I thought you were gonna like get get down and dirty on the Dan Smith thing and you just like politically corrected the first to sit here and just oh, here we go. I mean I mean I told it how it was. I just I'm not I I'm not a person that's gonna put somebody's name out there for doing now, honestly, something. Man, I, I, I wouldn't ask you to. I no. mean I get it. I, I know how it is. Now in person, in person if I seen him and, and they said something, then you would know. But other than that, I'm not going to do that. You know what I mean? I get it, man. No, I, I, I hear you. I mean, some things are best left unsaid. 100%. So, you know? Because you never know. I'll take, I'll text you later. <laughs> always, always zoom like someone's watching because you never know. <laughs> always zoom like someone's watching. Handle yourself like a professional. <laughs> <laughs> if he dies, he dies, okay? If he dies, he dies. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I look forward. Right, to man, go, uh, go spend some time with that little man of yours, and uh, um, we'll talk soon. Please. Yeah, look forward to having you on the follow up and, and round tables and such. We appreciate you taking the time, brother. All right, brother. Thanks for having me. Later. See ya. Well, buddy, another great interview. Thank you for. Uh, for I know you were in a rush. I had a lot of stuff going on. You hopped on here, made it great. So I appreciate you taking that time. Man, I'm 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 glad we got Arjun on because uh, a lot of people don't really know him because they think he's not approachable, but he's 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 super he's super uh, likable, super easy to talk to, uh, and he's pretty pretty funny. Um, so I mean, next time that you know anybody sees him, especially in Texas since he's moving back, do yourself a favor, go up and talk to him, man. He's he's a wealth of knowledge. He's an extremely humble person. Uh, and just just a great all-around guy. He does smash the middle pretty freaking hard, and 
Um, that's that's fun to watch. Um, so, you know, I'm I'm glad that uh, I'm glad he was on. Yes, sir. I'm glad he made the time to do it. it, it I'm glad for everybody else that hopped on here too. Asked some really great questions tonight. Thanks, Rhino, and and everybody else that hopped on here. That that you guys brought up some really good topics. Um, we like to you know wing it. We write down what we want to go off of, and we try to branch out, ask a few different things here and there. And it's nice when you guys can come in because maybe there's something you want to ask that we haven't touched based on, or um, something that we have written down that we because we jump around so much that we might have forgotten to go back to it. And then you see and ask it, and we're like, oh, perfect. So we're, it works out pretty dang good, and we appreciate y'all because y'all make it worth it, us doing it. Good things that, that I think they should take into consideration, but, you know, we're just two low lives doing a live, you know? <laughs> well, we're awfully cute, though. <laughs> Hard the good looks and determination. Who knows what we can do? We can change Who knows what we can do? Endless, <laughs> buddy. Guys, <laughs> yeah. all right, brother. Yeah. You have right, a I'll, I'll talk to you tomorrow, yes, sir. All right. Later. Well, that's it for Big Daddy Hacks Live. I want to thank you all for tuning in, giving uh, giving Arjun the respect he deserves. And, and like I say, he's a good cat getting to talk to him, getting to know him a little bit. So, with that, Big Daddy Hacks, tune it out. Appreciate y'all. See you later. Peace. If you hear me!